He tried to jump up and get some grain, it looks like. Probably stuck in the panel. Oh boy. All right, so Doc is out here to look at a three-year-old pony that we have. Um, it looked like the stifles were locking out. That used to be our office. Wow, that was kind of little. Just that, and we had nothing else but where the round pen is. That's your rabbit. Yeah, that's the one you got. So we are here for Farrier Day. Um, we have a new farrier with us today. All right, there's the little potatoes. Everyone's taking a puppy. Woohoo! They they are super relaxed in the pasture. He's probably the sweetest of all the ones that you want to look at. A wild horse rescue out in Florida brought us four Mustangs. Um, from what I understand, they just haven't been able to get anything done with them. So they brought them out here to us. We're gonna get weights on them right now, take some pictures and scan them for microchips. So I am off flight duty, but my physical therapist doesn't want me riding still for another couple weeks. We gotta shave that brand down so we can see what we're working with there. Yeah. Where'd they stick your microchip, Mary? Okay, well, I guess cowboy stuff. So we're gonna go see what that means. It's probably stuck in the panel. Be my guess. Either underneath of it or in, in it. Oh boy. He tried to jump up and get some grain it looks like. And he got himself stuck. Way to go dummy. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm fine. You just got off light duty. Don't get hurt again. <laughs> well, that's, you know, Owen called me over here. So, if I get hurt, it's his fault. Uh, he's okay. He's just really dirty. Poor guy. <laughs> he really hurt nothing. Really? Might be a little sore on his front leg for a little while. Right back at it. Try to get the grain. I just pulled her in here to get her weight and check for a microchip. I'm gonna actually put her back out into that pen and then work on getting her caught. And the chute there, it could be a potentially stressful situation. So I would like her to be able to move freely when I'm working and getting her caught. I thought I found a microchip, but I'm starting to think that this mare does not have one. Something I've done while being on light duty is I've studied a little bit, uh, a few different techniques. Uh, been listening to a lot of um, Work Schiller on his techniques. And he's got a very similar foundation as I have, at least with the people I've studied, the people he, he studied, and the people that he's actually had the chance to work with. Like a lot of those guys, they preach, get the horse to move their feet, and you have the horse. And something I learned while being on light duty there is that may not always be what you wanna do. Sometimes you wanna get the horse's mind with you first before you try to ask the horse to move his feet. So I'm gonna definitely be working on applying a lot of the things I've learned while I'm not being able to touch any horses. So we'll see how it all translates over. So all I'm pretty much doing is trying to get the horse's attention on me 
So right there, she's paying attention to me. Give her some encouragement, good girl. If she wants to turn away, that's fine. I'll just switch with her. She's just looking for a way out right now. Right there, she was thinking about it. Good girl. And then when she really makes an attempt to kind of reach out for me, maybe check out my hand with her nose, give a lot of encouragement there, and maybe leave her alone for a minute. You're doing good. Good girl. So right here, I'm just kind of taking my time with it. I want her to kind of seek me out. Instead of looking for a way out, I want her to be paying attention to me. And this is a good way to kind of start having them seek you out. You just put your hand out and wait for them. And when she settles on my hand, I'll take it away. Good girl. And any attempt that they make, got to reward it. It may be something small. You may be looking to get a lot more done when you're going out and working with your horse. But if your horse can't do this, this is square one. So why would you move on to square two, square three, square four, when you haven't even completed square one yet? When you're gentling horses, I have no issue giving cookies. Now, if you have to give your horse a cookie every single time you go out to catch it, that's a different issue. Let's hold this here, wait, see if she'll take it. She's thinking about it. She may be a little concerned about my hand being here, but pretty soon that won't be an issue. She took the cookie, so I'll let her enjoy that. Good girl. So now she's kind of seeking me out. I might call that good for today. I might just work on some leading. And if you could give that release before they take that step, when they start shifting their weight forward, that's even better. Always make sure you got their attention before you turn them loose. I see a lot of people who go and turn their horses loose and their horse is looking way over their shoulder, looking where their friends are before they get let loose. And as soon as they get let loose, they take off. Um, it's something called leaving your horse first. So always make sure you have their attention before you do anything. So she did really good for the first time. It did take her a while to get her attention on me. But when she finally did, she was pretty good about keeping it on me. And there was a couple times where she was thinking away from me, but just kept at it. Made sure she had her attention on me towards the end and then ended on that good note. I've got three more that came in with her that I'm gonna get pulled in and pretty much do the same exact thing with today. And then I'm gonna get back to work on the horses I've been missing out on for the past three weeks. So Doc is out here to look at a three-year-old pony that we have that Owen noticed yesterday. Um, it looked like the stifles were locking out, so we're going to have Doc assess what's going on today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was worried about string halting because it, it the, jumps like that. But it's, in the, it's the patellas. What are you checking, Doc? It, <clears throat> The patella rides in the groove from the condo, from the end of the femur, and it, her, her patella, her kneecap is just popping out. I mean, you can, you can just push it over. You can feel it. You can feel it pull over. I'm trying to make sure that tell the difference. See if she had string halt or if it was this patella dislocation. And that's what is it's the patella. Sometimes if you get them strong and you can get muscle on there, it'll help hold it in a little bit. Little That's what I call it. She's a cute little thing. <laughs> it's patella luxation. I think so. Probably alternating. Yeah, it's loose. How old is that little nugget, Doc? I think it's like three. Yes. Yeah, three, two, three. If somebody said two, I wouldn't fight them. So what do you think for this one's outlook? 
See if we can get some muscle on her, see what she does. Okay. Do you, do you think she, cause like with it locking up and like that, do you think it's okay to still have her in a pasture? Should she stay in a stall? Let's turn her out in the pasture, get some exercise. I think exercise would help. I guess you can wait until like later to turn her out if you want with the rain. We think someone cut the tail to try to make it look like a baby. Yeah, I can see that. After we came down from quarantine, we ended up having an impromptu horse surrender today. The owners told us that they rescued the horse from an auction four years ago, and she was previously foundered. So they've been working with their farrier um, and doing a lot of hoof care and rehabilitating her. Unfortunately, it's gotten to the point that their farrier had told them that the coffin bone was getting ready to push through the bottom of the feet. They weren't sure what to do, so they did bring her here, and we do appreciate that instead of her ending up back in an auction. Um, unfortunately, when she got off the trailer, she was in so much pain, she could barely walk. Thankfully, we had Doc here um, to be able to do a full exam right away. And unfortunately, we did have to give her the last act of kindness because once that coffin bone has rotated so much that it's gonna be coming through the soles, no amount of shoes will be able to fix that. So we are happy that her owners brought her to us instead of you know, selling her, putting her back in the slaughter pipeline. And now she will no longer have any pain or suffering. The adopters that were just here on Thursday just came to pick up Hera. It's good color on you. Mm -hmm. It's volunteer day today. We're gonna go ahead and take a tour of the barns. She is a friend of Carrie who is from Colorado Horse Rescue Network in Colorado, one of our partnering um, rescues. I'm Stephanie, I'm from Colorado. I've known Carrie, I don't know, it's probably been close to 15 years now. Um, have taken in horses through a trainer release program and trained them and helped her rehome them. And we've been friends for a long, long time. I was in the area, visiting the area and checking out the area. And so decided to come down and check out Horse Plus Humane Society. Our 10 stall barn's about three years old. Work. Yeah, um, we did convert one of our stalls into a kitten into pen. Into our kitten. And it got so bad this summer that we got a portable air conditioner for them. Nice, they so need it. Our intake, our surrender horses come in here and they'll stay in the stalls here until our vet sees them. We don't put them with the other horses. And if they do get turned out, they'll get turned out to one of these two pastures, our intake pastures. Nice, make sure there's no spread there of go. disease. Yeah, but, but they usually stay here or there until the vet sees them. This is our arena. Oh, nice. We had it out one of the pastures, but it was hard to use it in the winter when it rains here all the time. Yeah. Kind of made it now, so we have tie outs for the horses. Oh, nice. They can be groomed, they can do everything on this side. And of course the stock. Yep, this was just built because we had a um, Belgium with some really bad feet. Oh man. And then we got our, we just put a scale in down here. Oh nice. So we don't have to take them up to quarantine to, to, Very nice. to do that. Larry, go home. Hi, That's a neighbor's dog. Hi bud. He thinks he lives there. We have three stalls here that um, trainers will use. Oh, nice. To bring the trainer, you know, to pull the horses that they're going to use. Nice. And how many trainers work here? We have two and one um, exercise rider. Nice. And this is just our, all of our horses. Nice. Our quarantine barn is up here on the top of the hill. Keep them away from everybody else. Yep. Where those red fences are, uh -huh. there's 30 foot between the fences here and the fences over there oh, nice. to keep them a distance. There's three sections in the back so we can separate them if we have stallions or minis or... And then we have 10 acres on the far side that we just let the ones that don't need too much extra food or anything. And this is our up and coming vet barn. Oh, nice. Your own vet barn. I love it. 
because we're an open door shelter, we don't turn anything away. We take anything, everything. But then like our puppies, they'll go to a, a local rescue here in town. Oh, nice. When she gets, this is mama. Yeah, so you have your own kennel. Oh, it's even a rabbit. Yeah, oh, we got a bunch of rabbits. <laughs> Some of them are out getting fixed right now. Oh, good. It's a pretty medicine hat. They're pretty cute. Oh, we've all... Don't let me take one home. We get attached. <laughs> all of us here get attached. I stay away from the dogs. That used to be our office. Wow, that was kind of little. Just that, and we had nothing else but where the round pen is. I mean, I think that's about the size of Carrie's office right now. She's that's got a was... nice tough, tough shed. It's so well the, put together. But, the desk know. was all up fit in there and a little refrigerator. And we worked out of that for about three years before this was built. Grab a brush, start scrubbing. Okay. I'm not gonna climb in these buckets. Not gonna climb in them? I climb in the water troughs to clean them. I mean, you kinda have to, depending on the size. Yep. I do, I climb right in all of them. Hi, Bob. Like this, like this, yeah, you friendly? Yeah, I hate to disappoint you. There's nothing in these yet. So I got to go go tour the facility and see all the horses that are being helped here, which was super cool, and help get clean up buckets and get everything ready for feeding time for later today. So lots of fun. I've really enjoyed my time here. So we are about to do a transabdominal pregnancy check on a horse, as well as a fluorescein stain to see if there is an ulcer in the eye, because one of the horse's eyes is also pretty squinty. This is just ultrasound gel. Helps transfer the waves so we can get an image. Being a very good girl. No, she's breathing very heavy. See, that's all fluid in there. I'm worried. See, these are ribs. I feel like there's a lot of fluid in there. I know. This is not looking good. Mm -mm. All right, I'm going to do one more with the other transducer. But I'm not, not liking what I'm seeing. I have seen what could be fluid in the abdomen. Um, given the fact that she is breathing pretty hard, it may indicate a heart issue, um, but we are gonna be in contact with Dr. Lydia about what we have seen and kind of what her thoughts are. Woo, that's a big old ulcer. No way. Yeah, that hurts. With something that serious, I would um, draw her blood, spin it down, get the serum, treat it with the serum, as well as uh, antibacterial. Okay. Hey, do you have time for another quick question? Sure, what's up? I got a really another bad case. So I just got off the phone with Dr. Lydia and unfortunately there is no baby. Um, it's a lot worse than what we were hoping. So she does have ascites, which is fluid accumulation in her abdomen. Um, our top differentials would be liver failure, kidney failure, heart failure, none of which are great. Um, unfortunately, the fluid that we did pull when I did an abdominocentesis was yellow tinge, which is showing us evidence of some organ failure, as well as her respiratory. She's having a lot of issues with that. She has an increased respiratory rate. Um, the sounds in her lungs do not sound good, so we are giving her a pretty dose, high dose of steroids right now intravenously just to make her feel better currently. And then um, we are working on getting one of the vets out here to do the last act of kindness.
There's an adopter here and they're gonna be looking at some of our bunnies. Rabbit? That's your rabbit. Yeah. Yes. I, got I want to see a rabbit. Yeah, you like it. <laughs> yeah, it's mainly for it's mainly for them, but of course I'm gonna be a mom, so <laughs> you gotta be taking care of it. Yeah, I, have to. <laughs> I like a peanut rabbit. It's Lola. Me. Her name's Lola. Yeah, it's Lola. Bye. Say bye, bye girls. Sitting there, like, kind of petting her, and I'm like, No, I like, I really, I'm, I'm one. Okay, all right, <laughs> I'm like, I'll take the responsibility. Oh, they were out getting Lola comfortable in her car for the ride home, and they decided they want to get a second bunny. Lola has a friend. The adopter was just gonna get one bunny, but then they came back and decided to get two. Hi, I'm Dawn Kretzinger. I'm the grants manager here at Horse Plus Humane Society. I process all the grants from the Galdine, the Last Act of Kindness, the Urgent Care, and the Auction Rescues. I do all the paperwork and get in contact if I need additional information as pictures and everything else that we need to process it. And then I'll pass it along to the accounting department to pay. I started here in September of 2018. I was a volunteer for two and a half years. December 31st of 2020, I started as the weekend feeder. And I did that until April when I then took over the application liaison position. And I did that for a year and then I went back outside and worked in the barns for a while and I recently just took over the grant manager department. We moved here in January of 2017. We didn't know anybody. Um, a co-worker of my husband mentioned that there was a horse rescue in Holmwald that did tip volunteers. I come out here and they got stuck with me. I started two hours once a month and then it was eight hours once a month and then eight hours once a week and then I just never left. When I started here, my first auction intake was um, 2019, August of 2019. I rescued my first Tennessee Walker, which was a big click. Tony then introduced me to the protest that they do every year, once in um, Columbia in June, and then at the celebration in Shelbyville in August. I've been very actively protesting and trying to get the soaring of Tennessee Walkers ended every year. I love working here. I love being able to go out and love on these horses that have been neglected and not had a lot of hands-on attention. Just going there and watching them when you gain their trust and seeing their face when they'll finally take a treat from your hand is just so fulfilling for me. I really love my job here at Horse Plus Humane Society and the mission that we stand for. So we are here for farrier day. Um, we have a new farrier with us today. Um, Lyle and Kayla, they have gotten really busy with their schedule and while we love them, um, they're just gonna stick with our more specialty cases, but thankfully they found us another great farrier. So today is Elijah's first day with us and we're gonna see how it goes. So this is Trooper, he's one of our little senior guys and he's getting his feet done. Alright, Trooper is done and Kelsey is getting the next horse. Who is this, Kelsey? This is Apache. He was the owner surrender. Okay. So he has a speech from. Okay. So the only thing was with this is front right and like his foot looks straight on the outside. So I don't know if it's just that unbalanced or what, cause it looked level on the outside and then his left foot sat straight. Yeah, interesting. So she didn't really tell us why he needed the shoes. 
just that she was sick of putting money into shoes. Sailor, who is this? This is Glory. She came from the July auction and she's getting a period. So we are working on 12 horses today and so far everything seems to be going really well. Um, so her face is continuing to heal in. There's a little bit of purulent discharge today so we're gonna flush it out again um, and see what's going on in there. So he found white line disease in this donkey, which I feel is pretty common with donkeys with overgrown hooves. So we, this is what we needed the Vaseline for on our wish list. We are gonna put our copper sulfate Vaseline mix in there and it will help treat all the white line disease. I've never mixed it with Vaseline. Does it stay in pretty well? Yeah, it does. This is a Kayla special. Okay, interesting. Um, we just got like the pool stuff, you know, the crystals, mm -hmm. ground yeah. it down, did this. I put it in my horse that she was trimming uh, a couple of times. And at the next trim, when she trimmed it, you could still see it up in there. That's very good. And two cycles, it was all cleared and her hose were crazy hard. Okay, I'm gonna have to try that. All right, we just got done um, doing 10 horses and donkeys. One had a set of shoes, but um, today was Elijah's first day. So how do you think it went? I think it went very well. Yeah, everybody behaved well. And uh, yeah, we had a good time. I am here taking Barbarella home today. She's a mini that's 42 years old. So she's just gonna go play with my other minis and just live our life at my house. <sighs> taking Barbarella home. So how many have you adopted from here? Spartan, Tilly, Carolina, Marley, Finn, Dusty Rose, Tilly, or um, Izzy, and now nine. And then two cats. <laughs> and two cats. Nine horses and two cats. Carolina has a, a back issue. She has a punct or a bulging disc in her neck, so that's why she can't be ridden. So her and, and Marley were the only two that actually came at healthy weights. I've, all the other ones have been two or three body scores. And now they're all fat and sassy. Randy's staying away from the camera. <laughs> the adoption photo. <laughs> I'm gonna name her Fianna after my mom. We got a lot of work to do. Come on, go get you some food. Okay, baby. Get you feeling all better and get you all nice and fat. My husband and I are so excited to take Barbarella home and put some nice weight on her and have her pasture fat with the rest of our animals. Forestry Humane Society is one of the local shelters that we work with to help us transfer out dogs to find them new homes and today they came to pick up eight puppies that were surrendered to us about a week ago. All right, there's the little potatoes. Cameras are intimidating. But like, but see how she's just like trembling? Yeah. But once you get her in the office, she just like wants to be like held and pet. I know. Aww. She likes Jenna. Yeah. <laughs> so she'll make a very loving dog. I just, 
one on one, she's great. I think she's definitely, I mean, especially because I walked through there, I think she'll just shut down. She's very sweet. She's pretty dog. Yeah, she is. She's terrified of the camera. She's so scared. She's got to be great in a foster, too. She, do, she would do good in a foster. And we do have a place that she can possibly go. So, um, yeah, oh, wow. Her. She's been there a long time. She gets a lot of love. I'm being attacked by vicious dogs. <laughs> you taking one home, Cor? No, I can't take one home. I got too many dogs at my house, but if I could take one home, I would take this one home. I'm gonna come out this way, so <laughs> that's literally how I've been feeding them. Because they, you can't open they, that. Yeah, I know, they, they all just pile up. <laughs> yeah, I've just been climbing in and out of the window. Let go. Let go. <laughs> it's just harder for me because I'm not as tall as you. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Comes with the <laughs> automatic tail. This is stupid! <laughs> Everyone's taking a puppy. Woohoo! Not really. You get a puppy and you get a puppy. Here. You like She's that one, Kimberly? She's my favorite. Oh, so you like so that one? cute. Look at her brindle. You want another one? <laughs> look, at, look at the puppy. Look at the puppy. I'm a happy man, John. I got two puppies in my hand. I got puppies. Okay. So. Worst thing that happens is you go blind from round arms. Um. Wow. It's worth it. <laughs> Kelsey, what are you holding there? I'm holding Snoopy. He's my baby. Aww. He wants to go home with me. Tanner, you also have a puppy? Oh, I have a puppy. It's an infestation of puppies here. We don't want to say bye-bye. Look. Aww. Let me tell you about my best friend. Okay, it's my time to go. Yeah, that's, that's a fuck. Thing. Being, uh, <laughs> Look at her little tail wagging. Oh my god. Sorry. Right, that's going to be a lethal tail one day. I like I'm going to miss them. <laughs> Her name's, her name's is Chloe. Look at that. I know. <laughs> Isabel, <laughs> your turn. So your turn. Uh, hey guys. Come on, you gotta get right, the puppies out. I didn't, I didn't have a puppy. I didn't get one. So I'm gonna, y'all buy puppies. Y'all have a good day. It's time to go back to work. <laughs> Tanner's going back to work. I didn't get a puppy. I didn't get to touch one. I didn't get to pet one. The adopters are here. They're going to be looking at Dandy and Cat. Um, that's Libby and Carol and Cat over there. Um, I'd say just from what I know of them, if you just got into the pasture, Libby's really curious. She'll like kind of come up to you. Yeah. She doesn't necessarily want to be touched, but um, and we'll pull them into the round pen too for you to see. But she doesn't necessarily want to be touched, but she'll come up and like kind of see what you're doing and let you touch her nose before she's like, okay, I'm done, I'm leaving. Yeah. Um, Carol's super, super curious. Um, she'll watch you all day long, but she also doesn't necessarily want to be touched, but I think that's something you can improve on in time. I went out there and the three of them are in the same patch, pasture and I went out there earlier today and just kind of sat out there. Yeah. And they were all just kind of watching and hanging out. And it was kind of fun to see how like, they, they are super relaxed in the pasture. He's probably the sweetest of all the ones that you want to look at. <laughs> he just struggles with picking up his front, uh, I believe it's his front right. I don't know what it is, but all of his other feet are pretty easy. That one he just likes to stomp down and not really give it to you. He's already following you around. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I like him. <laughs> I really like him. 
He's really like, I like that he follows me. <laughs> yeah, he followed you pretty quick. He, he did. Right oh, you're so pretty. Oh, you're so good. It's probably the easiest to ever pick this up, but then he just tries to take it away. Do you want to see another one? Do you want to look just so that way we're not settling on the first one you look you at? You can settle yeah. on the first one if you <laughs> like, want to. Mem That's totally remember what fine. I told you? <laughs> I know, but I gave her a talk about the whole don't settle on the first one because it's like whenever you know, you know. I feel like I know though. That's not the first one she looked at. She looked at three more there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she looked True. at them. She didn't. <laughs> okay, we'll look at one more. Okay. Yeah, I don't feel a click with her like I did with Dandy. Yeah. She's gonna need a lot more work. I mean, it's just a struggle sometimes trying to get her to pay attention to me when I'm in here working. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like Dandy. Her buddy, her buddy sourness is a, a bit much. But yeah, she she's definitely made progress since being here, I will say. Yeah, she doesn't try to strike me in my face anymore, so that's always good. Oh, well that's progress. So Dandy's your guy, huh? Yes. We'll go get him. Get your adoption photo. I just feel like I kind of like clicked with him. This is kind of like just what she I do. She is very high energy. She definitely is. I feel like Danny, like, as, as soon as like he looked at you, like he kind of like turned around and was like looking out at the corner and was like looking at you. That's why I was like look at him because he was yeah. looking at you. Yeah. Ain't it time that we speak our minds and just realize we're meant to be? Taking dandy. I think we found this color. <laughs> oh, he looks good. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, you can fill in his photo on Looking for Love and then the Found Love this month. It's just a touch by tape, so. Yeah, okay. Just start a little tradition. It's gonna jump in. Right? <laughs> oh, I'm short. Oh. Thank you so much. I found out from her. Sorry. She told me about the rescue because her sister came here. So she told me about it and then I checked him out. I remember like my sister telling me about you guys and she got a horse from here also and she posted um, like people should come here type thing and that's whenever I was like, hey, you need to come here. <laughs> I ended up taking Dandy. He's a 10 year old gelding. I got him purple. He's gonna be <laughs> all purple. <laughs> he looks handsome in it. It's been really good. Everyone's been super nice. Um, they gave me some options for horses, or I told them options on horses, and then I kind of just clicked with the first one. I said I wouldn't do that. But I think I it's it. the second one because you petted the other one first. Okay, true, true. I said I wouldn't do that. That I would have my options open, <laughs> but he didn't. When really you happen. know, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I would definitely recommend them. I'm just gonna stick with one horse for a little bit and then <laughs> I'll probably come back. <laughs> I think we both know how these things go. <laughs>